let's uh, carry on through this hall of shame of ATX power supplies then. So this is 16 power supplies I linked on my uh, how to repair any ATX PSU uh, video. And this really is trying to form like a library of real life faults. So if you work through these, by the time you've been through these, you probably know a lot about ATX repair, yeah? Um, so we've done quite well so far. We've fixed some. We've had some tricky ones, but, you know, they've been fixed. And I did say I would fix every power supply on this list, and so far I've managed that. There's a few, a few waiting for bits, and one I'm a bit uncertain what the fault was. Uh, but waiting for a bit still and um, let's see what happens so anyway this is number 11 uh, this is voted by uh, Daniel hi Daniel how, how are you doing mate um, he said he thought this was quite unusual because the fault we had noted was at 3.3 volts was high and he said he hadn't come across this before uh, so first of all let's power this on via the light bulb to limit the power into it so nothing can go bang I've got no load on this at the moment, just the analyzer. And let's just have a look to see uh, what it does when we plug it in and what voltages we do have, yeah? Let's see if I actually made a correct note of the fault on this. So I've switched it on, powered on and powered off again. Oh, and powered on again. And powered off again. And stayed off. Okay, that's that's, uh, that's interesting. So that's what it did. I've previously noted that this had 3.3 volts high. So let's put a, a bit of a load on it. I'll try a couple of hard drives uh, first. And let's see if it will power up with a load. Okay, so I have a couple of hard drives attached to this. One SATA and one IDE. So let's have a look and see what happens with it now when I try and power it up. It's on and it's stayed on. And all the voltages are stable. Oh, that's interesting. The 3.3 is reading 3.4. Oh, it's up to 3.5, 3.4, 3.5, 3.4. So, I'll just uh, zoom down. You can actually just have a look to see what's happening on there. Yeah, if we just get into the, into the shot. Uh, focus that one up. There you go. So that 3.3 is a little bit high, it's a little bit unstable. Um, so yeah, let's let's have a look to see what's happening with this. Uh, but notably, this only seems to want to work with a load. I'm going to do what I did on the previous video and put a, a, a resistor, a 2 ohm resistor on the 3.3 volts to give it about 1.5 amps of load. So I'm not convinced the ATX, uh, sorry, the, the, the uh, SATA hard drive whether this actually draws any power from the 3.3 or not. So let's do that as well. Let's give it a, a good load on 3.3 on volt supply. So I've jammed uh, my resistor into one of the 3.3 volt uh, wires, yeah, the orange wires, and this meter probe into one of the blacks, and then through this crocodile clip to the other end of the resistor. What I did notice, by the way, while I was doing that, can you see here? There's a brown and white, green, sorry, a brown and orange wire together going into this 3.3. From the previous experience, one of these wires, probably the brown one, is the feedback that monitors the voltage. So it looks like this is another power supply that monitors a 3.3 volt rail, yeah? And that's the rail that it's looking at when it sort of alters the drive going through the uh, switch mode power supply, yeah? Uh, so that's the one it's actually monitoring. Uh, I'm just going to get my meter, it's on the volts range, and I'm just going to stick it across the resistor. I'm going to switch it on, and then make sure I've got a connection, so I should see 3.3 volts here. And I'm actually interested to see how accurate that is, yeah? How close it is. So let's switch it on. So we're on. I'll just switch the limiter off, the light bulbs, because it's obviously drawing some power now. And do we have a connection here? No, it looks like I don't. And the resistor isn't warm. Okay, I'm not making a good connection here. Let me just uh, redo that a different way. Okay, so I've done that. So I've just got a couple of meter probes in here now, yeah? And um, you'll see now that 
once I put this resistor on here, this is a 2 ohm resistor, that the 3.2 is now stable, it's like 3.2, 3.3. So I don't think this actually has a high voltage rail at all, it's just that with no load, that is a little bit effectively high, yeah, but as soon as you put some reasonable load on, I'm drawing about 1.5 amps off that, it's now stable, yeah. What I have noticed is we have a noisy fan. Can you hear it? So um, let's fix that. Let's fix the noisy fan. <laughs> okay, so this one it's uh, it's a 400 uh, watt, yeah, 400 watt supply, um, and it's a fairly simple design. This one, the 3.3, by the way, can handle up to uh, 14 amps, and I'm putting about uh, 1.5, 1.7 1 amp load on using this uh, 2 ohm resistor, yeah. Uh, since I've uh, come across this on all the repair jobs on here, this is an extremely useful bit of kit, yeah. Uh, so if you're repairing power supplies, I suggest you get something like this. Um, I mean, this will, on a 5 volt rail, it'll put about 2.5 amps on, yeah. Uh, on a 12 volt rail, it's going to put about 6 amps on. Uh, and on that, uh, 12 volts at 6 amps, it's going to get very, very hot indeed, yeah. I mean, you know, 612, 672 watts. It would handle that, but you'd probably have, you'd have to bolt this to like a big metal heat sink and have a fan on it, yeah. But if you just want, you know, just uh, temporarily, I'd certainly use it for loading the 3.3 and the 5, yeah. And I wouldn't worry too much about that. I mean, 5 volts, uh, 2.5 amps, you're looking at uh, 10, what, 12 and a half watts, yeah. So it's a nice thing. Get yourself one or two of these, I guess. I mean, you can put two in series, giving you four ohms. Yeah, and they're not expensive. Uh, so that's handy. Keeping all of that, yeah. Um, so the power supply, it's one we've seen before. The uh, controller chip is on the low voltage side. Three transformers. Uh, standby, main, and that one will be driving the base of the switching transistor, which is under here, yeah. No PFC, not active PFC in this one. But it does have passive PFC. Yeah, there's this choke here. Um, these are worth keeping if you've got scrap power supplies. I've kept a couple of these. Because it's possible you may come across a power supply with active PFC. And if the active PFC is not working, you might want to use this to just kind of like effectively replace the active with a passive at least maybe for testing purposes so I, I would suggest you if you come across some of these just keep hold of them yeah keep them in your, in your stash of useful stuff yeah so anyway the fan's noisy on this and you can see that the fan itself I'll just show you if you get it so I'm block, not blocking the camera look the fan itself pulls in and out yeah so I'm just interested to see whether that's something we can actually fix or is it just going to be a matter of putting a new fan on it, yeah? Um, so let's just uh, take the fan out and now let's have a look to see uh, what's going on with it. Very nice, they've actually put a plug on it, yeah? That's a sign of quality, eh? The fact they actually bother put a plug on the fan is they're just soldering the wires to the board, you know? Because, I mean, y you can't be talking many sense that you're saving in price yeah just by soldering them on to the board but obviously you've seen you've seen power supplies where they do exactly that yeah okay i'll get that pull out of there without pulling the whole thing out and then let's have a look at this fan okay so out here's our fan yeah and as i say this is moving loose now this should be held down the spindle which comes through here behind this label should have like a plastic collar or like a circlip thing on that really that holds that in place and it seems to be not doing so so the first thing we're going to do is to take the this label off yeah these should come off quite easily and then this sort of thing you can do on any fan i mean this is this is a power supply fan but you know a case fan and similar and um i mean you know you could just buy a new fan but some of some of the brands are quite expensive you know if you're looking at Cooler Master and Noctua and some of these uh, premium brands, so they're definitely worth having a look to see if you can fix in some cases. So first of all, we need to see if we can lift up this label. If it's tough to get off like this one is, 
it's probably a good idea just to get a uh, hot air yeah and just warm it up a little bit carefully of course because you don't want to be melting anything here yeah but just see if you just warm the label a little bit and that should help uh, quite a bit to uh, get it off it's kind of like freeze up the adhesive behind it yeah okay so I'll give that a bit of a warm not too hot to touch it's just nice and warm yeah now let's see if we can get this uh, sticker off here yeah, can you see that's coming more easily now? Yeah. Just kind of going around the edges of it. And hopefully this will lift off. Once I get enough to get hold of it, it helps if you've got long fingernails. You had to trim mine the other day. Um, so it didn't help yet. So that comes off there, yeah? That's your sticker. So just keep that on one side, yeah? And you see the uh, hot air helps a lot there. Now we need to get this little cover off here. It's like a rubbery cover on this one. Yeah, so that's popped off. And inside here now, we can actually see, can you see in here, is, is the shaft, yeah? And you can see it's pushing up and down. That's probably because this little clip has moved. Let's see if we can push that down a little bit more into position. This one's proving quite tricky. Um, does this ring come out of here as well? It might do. No, that's kind of like glued into there, yeah. Uh, so what I'm hopefully trying to do is to push this ring further down this shaft a little bit, yeah. Um, I don't think it will rotate to do it, but uh, we can absolutely rotate it here. Yeah? There. Now I've got it, it's going to go a bit further in. Still moving. Yeah, this one's actually split. Can you see there? It's 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 got a big split in it, yeah. Uh, let's uh, see if we can just lift it off. If we lift this off, I can actually take the the shaft out altogether, yeah. Let's see if we can lift this up and let's see if we can see what's happened to this. Maybe that uh, slightly blade-ended one again would be the one to do it with. That's a flat one. This is a pointy one, yeah. Try to get the clip off here. Does it want to go off that easily? I'll tell you that. And it doesn't want to push down on into it either. Aha. Okay. So we have like a little uh, ring, yeah, and it's got a, a split in it. Okay. That's like a kind of a circle, actually. That's that that's uh, that looks like it's meant to have a split in it. Yeah, to insert it. So now I'm thinking we can actually push this shaft. Yeah. So that comes out. This is the shaft to the motor. Now, you can see in here, this is where the ring sits. So it appears to me that this ring is actually in the right place. And this is meant to be moving a little bit, yeah? It's actually meant to be able to move. So what we'll try to do with this is, we'll get a bit of uh, oil in here, okay? Uh, I'm going to use like uh, some 3-in-1 oil, it's quite a common brand, it's an old product, it's been around for years and it's very good. So I'll get a bit of 3-in-1 oil down there and then we'll put this little plastic ring back on and we'll see whether or not that's actually made the noise go away. Okay, different day, same video, yeah. So uh, I have to get some 3-in-1 uh, oil. Uh, oh, this is the Spanish, yeah, Tres and Uno. <laughs> I quite like that. Um, don't use WD-40 to do this, by the way. WD-40 isn't really an oil, yeah. It, it's uh, a water dispersant. That's what it's meant to be. That's what it stands for, WD-40, yeah, water dispersant. Um, it's also, by the way, I think, uh, the WD-40 is probably, like, the perfect product of its type because, like, 
everything else they make like they always bring like a new improved one out don't they like you know so you get like washing liquid and stuff like new improved formula so like by any sort of reckoning we should we should be on like WD-48 by now but no we still have WD-40 <laughs> so obviously they can't better that one yeah but for this it's no good so another thing I just mentioned about this by the way what sets the position of this in here is this little brass bearing that you can see here, the sleeve bearing, yeah. So it's the depth of this into here that actually effectively sets the position of the fan. And it seems to me that bearing has been put in quite a long way forward. And the little clip fits into the little ring quite a way back. And that's why this fan actually moves up and down a bit, yeah. Whether that's meant uh, as a, a design feature or whether it's just like because they couldn't be bothered but the sleeve bearing in the right place, I'm not quite sure. Um, but anyway, we can get a little bit of oil now and we can just get it inside there, yeah, to get down inside the bearing. Um, you can do this, by the way, without taking the little clip off. Um, I took the clip off this one because I was interested to see why it was moving backwards and forwards freely, yeah. Uh, so normally you could just, with the clip on, get a little bit of oil down effectively inside here yeah uh, just a spot uh, but anyway we've got some oil on there so let's now see if we can put the little clip back on again so here's the little clip I've just such it in place on top of it yeah and I'm going to try and use two pairs of tweezers to see if I can get this to actually lock back into that little ring that it sits in yeah that holds the shaft in place so just by pushing down on both sides I'm hoping this will actually clip back into place, yeah. It can be a little bit tricky, but uh, with a little bit of patience, yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll get it. Just a matter of getting the little split to open up slightly, yeah. I think we have it. Or well, very close to we have it. Yeah, there you go. So I've sucked the little ring back in place now, yeah, on the shaft. So this this now moves in and out slightly again as it did before, yeah. So uh, let's connect this up and see if it's now running nice and silent. Okay, so I've put that all back together again. I've put the fan back in. Um, I've just left the lid off, but uh, it's all back together. So I've attached a couple of hard drives again as a load. I didn't bother with the 3.3 volt load this time. I just want to see if the fan's actually uh, running quiet now. So I'll just switch this on. Yeah, it's powered up. And if I just get very close to this with the microphone, that's absolutely silent. Yeah, it's silent. Okay, so um, that's it. We've uh, we repaired the fan. Yeah, nice and quiet now. Um, I mean, fans, you know, they got to be like five or ten euros, and this, you can do this on pretty much any sort of fan, whether it's you know case fans, uh, more premium uh, rated power supply fans. Okay, so there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. I'll be back with you very soon on another video. Ciao for now.